Hello again, my dear Odooers. So excited that you decided to join me on another awesome tutorial. Today, we're talking about consumption, and I don't mean tuberculosis. <coughs> That's something I should talk to my doctor about. No, I'm talking about flexible consumption for manufacturing components. You see, sometimes it's necessary to use a different quantity of components that is what's specified on the bill of materials or FOM. This is pretty common in industries like food service where the size of specific ingredients may vary. For example, let's say I'm making a dozen soufflés, which normally requires the use of 24 eggs. However, I wasn't able to get the extra large eggs that I normally buy, so I had to settle for the regular sized eggs. This means I'll actually need 30 eggs to make my souffle. In Odoo, the flexible consumption feature allows me to use a different component quantity than the one specified on my bomb while still keeping my inventory accounts accurate. So let's jump in and see how this all works. Now, the cool thing about flexible consumption is that we can choose whether it's allowed or blocked for each product we manufacture. To do so, we need to navigate to the, you guessed it, the bomb of our specific product. For that, I'm gonna to jump to our manufacturing application, click on products and head to our bill of materials. On the bill of materials page, I'm gonna go ahead and search for my cheese souffle. Then open up the miscellaneous tab right here. And here you're gonna notice there's a section called flexible consumption, which includes three different operations to choose from. If I select the allowed option, flexible consumption will always be allowed. If I select the allowed with warning section, then flexible consumption will be allowed, but users will receive a warning notification that requires them to confirm that they're intentionally using a different amount. Finally, if I select the blocked option, only managers will be able to close manufacturing orders for which a different component quantity has been used. For this video though, I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it on the allowed with warning option. All right, what do you say we make some souffles? I've already created a MO for a dozen souffles, so let's go ahead and open that now by heading to our operations and selecting manufacturing orders. And then we're just gonna select the most recent cheese souffle MO with the lower, uh, MO number. On the components tab at the bottom of the MO, we can see the to consume. That is producing a dozen souffles that typically requires 24 eggs, 500 grams of Parmesan cheese, and then one liter of heavy cream. Now let's use the example from the introduction and say that we actually need 30 eggs to fulfill this MO. No problem. All I need to do is click on the quantity field right here and then enter the number 30. Then I need to enable the checkbox in the column consumed. And if you don't see this column in your database, you can enable it by clicking the additional options button to the right of the MO tab and then enabling the consume checkbox if necessary. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and close this MO out by clicking produce all. Once I do, as you can see, a pop-up window appears titled consumption warning, which requires me to confirm that I'm intentionally consuming a greater quantity of components than what is listed in the bomb. This pop-up window appears because I selected allowed with warning as the option for the product's bomb. If I had selected allowed, the MO would be closed out without giving me a warning. At the bottom of the pop-up are three buttons here. The confirm button confirms that a different quantity is being consumed on purpose and then simply just closes out the MO. The set quantities and validate button goes ahead and reverts the consumed quantities back to what is specified on the bomb and then closes out the MO. The discard button closes the pop-up window and then just leaves the MO open. If we had selected the blocked flexible consumption option on the product's bomb, then the confirm button would not appear for regular users. In that case, a manager would need to close the MO out themselves. But I'll go ahead and just click confirm to close this out. And just like that, we've made a dozen souffles. Now, if you've watched a lot of our manufacturing app tutorials, then you probably know that MOs can also be processed from the shop floor module. If so, you're probably wondering if it's possible to use flexible consumption in shop floor as well. And the answer is, of course. How to do, we really think of everything. To do so, you'll need to create a quality control point or QCP that creates registered consumed materials, quality checks during the manufacturing process. To create a new QCP, I just need to go to the quality application and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on quality control and then quality control points. And then what we can go ahead and do is select this new button here. 
But for this example, I've already configured a QCP. So let me show you how it's configured. First, I'm just gonna go to the search bar, remove our quality points filter, and then choose our QCP001 here. As you can see, we have our cheese souffle product selected here in the product form field. And we also have in our manufacturing field in the operations tab, and then in the mix operation for the work order operation field. This means that every time a manufacturing order is confirmed for cheese souffles, a quality check will be created for the mix operation. We also have to select the register consumed materials in the type field and select eggs in the product register field. As a result, the quality check that gets created will ask us to confirm the total number of eggs we use for the MO. That's just a basic overview of how to configure a QCP for the specific workflow, but QCP behaviors vary greatly based on the setting of this form. So be sure to check out our quality control points video for a full overview of all their configuration options. I'll make sure to link that down below. Now, we're all ready to produce another batch of souffles using the shop floor module. I've already created a second MO to use as an example, so let's go ahead and head over to the shop floor now. On the card for the MO, I'll go ahead and collect on or click on assembly station one and open up the page for the work center where the mix operation can be carried out. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on egg check right here to register and open it up. In the quantity field, it's currently set to 24, so I'll just go ahead and change this to 30 like we did in the previous example and click on validate. After that, I can just go ahead and mark this as done and complete the work order by clicking to close production to close the MO. Once I do, the consumption warning pop-up window appears just like it did on the last MO we processed in the back end. And just like last time, I'll just click on the confirm to close the MO out. Now let's go ahead and hop over to the back end of the MO. And to do that, we're just gonna head over to the manufacturing applications, hit operations, and then manufacturing orders once again. And this time I'm just gonna remove the to-do filter to see all of our completed MOs and click on our most recent cheese souffle MO. If we look here, we can go ahead and see in the quality consumed in the components tab, we have 30 units set that were consumed just like we expected. And that's it for now, my dear O-Doers. Today you learned how to use flexible consumption on MOs in both the backend and shop floor module. Stay tuned for another awesome tutorial, but until then, I'll see you soon.